All right. Well, hey, everybody. So uh, thank you, everyone, for coming to another uh, RELTIO community webinar. Um, today, we have actually two people. So my apologies, Michael, for not putting you on here. But uh, we have Jill Snipes, senior technical consultant. We also have somebody representing DNB, Michael Gandalf, here to answer questions. And I think he's going to go through a couple of things as well. Um, so uh, that's, it's really showing the partnerships. So appreciate those guys being here. Uh, but we will be talking about the DMB connector and we will be going in depth. Um, so I am Chris Detzel. I'm head of the community here at RELTIO. Keep yourself on mute, please. Uh, ask questions in the chat. I'll make sure that these questions get answered as usual. The webinar will be recorded and shared out on the RELTIO community by next week. Again, I always hope that it's gonna be um, Friday, but we'll see. Um, so just a quick news, it's, it is a big day for us and it's a great day for our clients. So we're super excited to announce that uh, uh, RELTIO did secure $120 million in funding round that was um, announced today. So it's value in our business at approximately $1.7 billion. Um, I did add an event on the community. Uh, I'll show that here in a minute uh, for you guys to join us if you'd like um, uh, virtually at the NASDAQ. It will be November 9th at 6.30 Eastern time. So we're super excited about that. You know, please read all about it. If you go to community.relto.com, I posted it pretty much everywhere uh, that I can and you'll see links to the blogs and uh, the news release. Um, we do have lots of community webinars coming up uh, by the end of the year. Uh, that's one of them today, an in-depth look at the DMB connector. Uh, please also go to the celebration at NASDAQ with RELTIO if you want to attend. Uh, just RSVP and all that information will be filled out uh, or, you know, it'd be sent to your uh, calendar directly. And then uh, to kind of go uh, further with the um, RELTIO integration hub, Next week, we have a, a webinar on building recipes with RELTIO Integration Hub. So we go a bit deeper into that. Certainly excited about that. And then connect, uh, there's two webinars uh, on the Salesforce connector. One's just an overview. And then one is a little bit more in depth on how to set it up. And then another one that you guys really pushed um, on the community, interesting enough, is around RELTIO workflow, process design and deployment. Uh, that one is exciting because, you know, I've seen lots of questions around it and I was like, hey, we need to get a webinar and uh, we have it. So I'm going to stop sharing. But lots of great stuff on the community. And I think I'm going to hand this over to Joel. Is that right? That's right. Thank you, Chris, All for right. that great introduction. Um, and I want to thank Michael Gandalf from Dun & Bradstreet for being here today to, to help us with this webinar. Um, I want to start by giving anyone who's not familiar with Dun & Bradstreet uh, a little bit of an introduction and I'll let Michael kind of give an overview of uh, what Dun & Bradstreet can provide. So Michael, do you wanna tell us a little bit about um, the kind of data you provide, what, what, how Dun & Bradstreet brings value to um, our RELTIO customers using the connector? You bet. Thanks, Joel, and uh, thanks, Chris, for the introduction as well and the opportunity. So, so Dun & Bradstreet, we've been around for over 180 years. So it's not about the number of years. It's really what we've amassed from a, from a data insight perspective. Over 420 million organizations across the globe we have information on. We have a unique identifier we call the Dun's number. And we have linkages and hierarchy and a tremendous amount of insight that can drive AI, ML, and a lot of different use cases, right? The use case that we're starting with today is around master data management and our pre-built integration into RELTIO. When you think of Dun & Bradstreet holistically, it's the data sets that drive things like governance and quality, sites that drive AI and ML. And the important part of our partnership is pre-built connections. So you have connectivity and integrations out of the box. And towards the end, I know we'll talk about RELTIO integration hub, which can take additional use cases and data sets of Dun & Bradstreet data throughout your ecosystem, not just RELTIO, but other parts, be it ERP, CRM, marketing automation, et cetera. So I want just to, from a, from a standpoint of how you view Dun & Bradstreet, 
We focus first on the master data management use case, creating that golden record with our third-party data set, and then moving on to other use cases, which we'll talk about with the introduction of the RevTO Integration Hub. Awesome. Thank you, Michael. One of the, um, so the out of the box DMV connector uh, really lets you get up and running with Dun and Bradstreet really, really quickly. With from day one after you've, um, after you've turned on the Dun and Bradstreet connector, you can and start matching and enriching profiles. Dun and Bradstreet has a proprietary system to find the right Dun's number based on your companies that you're trying to enrich name. Uh, their address and their phone number is what we send over. And we get back that DUNS number. And that gives us another avenue to match between your existing records and get to that golden record. Uh, on top of that, then we can enrich the profile. So that brings in a lot of that market data and um, that overview of what your, your customer or your supplier looks like that you're enriching in, in RELTIO. On top of the uh, enriched data, it gives you a hierarchy. So companies have complex legal structures. Um, you have subsidiaries and, and corporate headquarters. You have domestic headquarters and you have global headquarters. And that relationship can be difficult to track. Dun & Bradstreet brings in that relationship and hierarchy information for you and continues to manage it for you through their proactive monitoring. So once you have a Dun & Bradstreet DUNS number, applied to your RELTIO profile, you can now have Dun & Bradstreet monitor that DUNS number. And when updates come through, they can automatically be pushed to RELTIO, which is one of our uh, cooler, newer features with the Dun & Bradstreet connector. Hey, Joel, if I can add too, that was, that was a fantastic overview. And just for some additional insight, think of it from all types of business entities. So that would be customers, suppliers, partners, et cetera, uh, that can all be mastered in the RELTIO solution. And for both the monitoring piece, it's important to note that we have over 30,000 data sources coming in to our data file and we have over 5 million updates a day, which certainly sounds like it's overwhelming, but the way that monitoring is set up is we'll push the notifications that you care about when they change on specific entities or organizations that you wanna monitor. Thanks for pointing that out, Michael. And, and just a curiosity, I am, um... For the monitoring, I, I know you have good coverage of things like the S&P 500 and that sort of thing. How about um, smaller businesses and, and not publicly traded companies? Is the monitoring available for that as well? Yeah, yeah, and that's, and that's a great question. It also could be a misperception about Dun & Bradstreet data. Um, obviously, publicly traded organizations have more breadth and depth of, of data that's available. And that's really where Dun & Bradstreet comes in. If you think about, we have 420 million plus entities across the globe close to 30 million, just, 30 million just in the US and Canada. Um, most uh, are private entities, right? Only a very small fraction of organizations are publicly traded in the globe. So our coverage of that 420 million plus, that's where we gather this data from those 30,000 sources, such as financial institutions, court systems, proprietary ways to gather data. So most of our data actually is on private uh, and small businesses, right? Because it matches the marketplace. And absolutely, if we have the organization, it has a DUNS number and data can be monitored. Awesome, that's, that's great to know. So there's really two connectors um, that come with the implementation of a relative Dun & Bradstreet connector. The first one I wanna show you is the on-demand connector. And the on-demand connector uses three of the uh, Dun & Bradstreet Direct Plus APIs, the get match to find the match based on that phone number, the name of the company and the address, the detail, get company details call um, allows for enrichment and these map one-to-one -one with our buttons in the UI and that's what they look like. They're normally in the right panel on the top of your screen and we're gonna jump into the UI in just a little bit and I'll show you how they work. And when you make that enrichment call, what we call the get company details. It also comes with the company hierarchy in that. In the bottom, I have a, uh, a little chart explaining what kind of permissions you would need to be able to make these calls from your tenant. 
Um, the main one I want to point out from a configuration perspective is you need role API, which is kind of basic API access for both your tenant and what we call the data tenant. And the data tenant, for those not familiar with our DTSS architecture, is a staging area for matches that might be um, a potential match from Dun & Bradstreet. So they come with that a ranking system, a match score of one to 10. And you might not immediately know which match it might be versus the headquarter and maybe a domestic or, or multiple offices um, for a particular customer. And this lets a data steward view the potential matches in the UI and make an educated decision on which one they want to match with. So with that, I want to jump out to the user interface and take a look at what that would look like. So we have an Apple profile here. I'm just going to refresh the page. And we have in the top right panel with all these other tabs, we have um, the Dun & Bradstreet connector tab and our two buttons I showed you earlier, the get match and get company details. And when I call get match, it's going to send an API call with the name Apple and address to the direct plus API at Dun & Bradstreet. And it's hopefully going to bring us back some potential matches. Did you say hopefully? <laughs> well, I'm, I, I may not be leading on to that. Uh, I've I pressed the button before for this record, but um, I deleted it and backed it back out. So Apple has a big presence in the United States. And surprise, surprise, we have 25 potential matches at varying qualities. So when a data steward comes from that first notification and sees that, hey, I have 25 potential matches, they're going to move to the potential match view over here on the left pane. And they can compare their record here on the left side with three potential match records from um, the Dun & Bradstreet connector. And on the right side, we also have 25 other potential matches. Um, and we can change which one's currently showing by clicking these flags and moving them to the uh, active pane to compare. So you can see here, uh, the address in our record is one Apple Park Way. And the three samples I have up, only one of those has a matching address of one Apple Park Way. And that is this first record with a confidence code of 10. So a confidence code of 10 coming back from DMB is the highest possible confidence code. It is very confident that this is the Apple we are looking for. So from here, I can make a decision to say not a match, which I'm going to say this San Francisco address is, which will remove it from this view. Or I can merge in the record I do believe to be a match. I can click and add it to my record. Hey, right, my rec yes. We have a couple of questions already. So we know that this is an active uh, group. And if you're going to cover this later, just let me know. But would like to understand how to set up monitoring for DMB connector on a Realtio tenant. I know some steps are on the DMB side, but I'd like to know the steps on Realtio side to set this service up. Is that something you'll be covering in this or is that? We'll be talking about it at a high level, but if we have some time, I can, I can dig in a little further. OK. Um, and then the other question is, uh, well, they're starting to come in now. Do we have control over the threshold for confidence score, you know, in the MDP score? We do. Um, so by default, if you have only one matching record with a confidence code of nine or 10, it will automatically merge. And so the reason our confidence code 10 record with a potential match and did not automatically merge is because there was also a confidence code nine which was close enough for it to say, we're going to let a data steward intervene here. But if we had only had a single record with a confidence code of 9 or 10, it would have auto-matched. And then records from 6 and up will always show if potential matches. But this is configurable by the uh, 
real-time mapping API. So we have a API that will let you update how the Dun & Bradstreet data is brought into your fields. And in that, you can adjust the settings of what auto merges, if you want anything to auto merge, and um, what threshold you'd like to have potential matches throw up, show up. That's a great, great question, Harash. And uh, the other question from uh, Paresh is, does the first step of three matches come up based on the highest to lowest confidence score? That's a good question. Um, and I, I've ha I know we have an enhancement request currently out for that. I very often see, I always see the best match as the first column, but the rest of the matches seem to be displayed a bit at random. So in this particular example, when you have 25 matches, you might have to do a little digging. 25 matches is the max we bring back. Um, most cases bring back a fewer matches, especially for smaller companies, so it's easier to identify. But that is a, a good chance to enhance this. I think they should be ordered in order of their confidence code, or at least have them displayed here. Yeah, another good question. So, all right, keep going. Thanks. All right, so we have matched our record. And what I want to do is jump over to the crosswalk resources view to kind of give you an idea of what's happening behind the scenes. So this red Dun & Bradstreet crosswalk was created when we pressed the button. Even if there were no potential matches available, this record would have this crosswalk created. And what it does is it populates two flags, letting us know if it has suspect matches or automatic matches um, available from the Dun & Bradstreet connector. So this is really a audit trail letting you know that the button has been pressed for this record previously. The second crosswalk we've created after the merge is the DPT crosswalk. And you see it has the DT colon deleted that stands for data tenant. This means this record has been brought over from our, our Dun & Bradstreet data tenant that I alluded to earlier. And when we merged, it, it brought that data and you can see all the purple fields are what's populated. The most important of which is the DUNS number. We did not have the DUNS number for the record previously. And this is what's gonna allow us to enrich our record. But it also brings over the, the matching criteria data like the phone number, the address, and the name along with it. So it kind of gives you a baseline of, of your, uh, your DUNS view of your record. But most importantly, you have your DUNS number. So I've had some customers who have migrated to Relteo who have already gone through the match process with Dun & Bradstreet. And they already have a DUNS number. If that's the case, you can skip this first step altogether. You don't need to do the git match and merge. If you have a DUNS number for your record, you can immediately go to git company details. And git company details looks up your DUNS number and brings back the company profile. So I'm going to go ahead and press that. All right, enrichment successful. Notice how the hierarchy will likely update. Oh, this is the, the top hierarchy. So we're not actually gonna get that, but I'll jump to another record with a hierarchy in a little bit. Um, so the API we use is get upward family tree. And if you enrich the highest record, there, there is no upward family tree because you're already at the top of the tree. But if you started with, for example, a parent record or a, like one of the children records, you'll get the uh, parents, grandparents, etc. So I have a example of that I can show you. So I enriched a Accenture office at the lowest level, and we got its parent, grandparent, and great-grandparent all the way up to its, its global headquarters in Dublin. And it actually went ahead and created three more organizations and the relationships in between them. 
So for our Apple example, we can see a whole lot of data that didn't exist previously, previously has been brought in. And conveniently, it's all located in this Dun & Bradstreet facet. We have information about his trade style name, um, the hierarchy and the, the Dun's number of the other records in the hierarchy, financial figures in terms of revenue and growth, all sorts of industry codes, and that sort of thing. We have the web URL, which we didn't have previously. And this has all been brought in by the Git company details call. So this is an overview of that real-time connector. This is meant for ad hoc data stewards to come in and enrich records individually. And a lot of the times, if you have a big data set, you don't have the, the time or manpower to go through and enrich each record in your system manually. So next, I want to talk about the batch connector. So this lets us enrich our records at scale, which is really cool. It's an asynchronous API call you make from Postman or any other kind of REST API tool or ETL tool. And what happens is you supply a filter, so some search criteria of records you want to enrich in RELTIO. My go-to is any organization without a DUNS number. RELTIO will extract all of those records and drop them in an S3 bucket, which Dun & Bradstreet is monitoring. Dun & Bradstreet will then pick up the records, match them, enrich them, and drop them back in the S3 bucket. And RELTIO loads it, enriching your records. By default, any match, the best match available over a match score of seven is, is matched to your data. So unlike the real-time connector, you don't have a potential match or a data steward managing what gets enriched and what doesn't. So that saves you a lot of man time, but it also um, is like a bit of a double-edged sword. So depending on your use case, I've had customers use different match score settings. This is completely configurable. So for like a marketing use case, I have a customer maybe dropping the match score to a five or a six, because if it's not quite right, not a huge impact, maybe just a few marketing dollars wasted. Uh, but the potential of having the information outweighs that. Whereas if you have a, um, a use case that requires a high degree of accuracy, you might set the threshold to an eight. And it also has a setting to automatically match records with the same DUNS. So if two records that are currently in your RELTIO tenant resolve to the same DUNS number, you can have RELTIO automatically merge them. So you're getting some value on your match and merge side on top of just the enriched data. But there's not much of a demo here because uh, the service level agreement is up to 48 hours. It very rarely takes that unless you have absolutely massive data sets. Um, but it wouldn't be conducive to a one hour webinar. And Joel, uh, Joel is there a, um, is there a max amount of records that can be put through that, that batch process within that 48 hours? Do we cap it for clients just to set the right expectations of turnaround? That is a good question. I am not aware of a max and I have put, I put some 10 million plus data sets through that were processed in well under a day. Uh, right. But I'd have to get back to you for that to, to know the max. Yeah, that's a, I mean, that's just be one of the typical questions. I got, I got it actually offline from, from, uh, from a client asking that same. So we certainly can, can take that and, and verify because that's a, that's a great volume that we see come through there. So that tends to meet a lot of needs of our, of our clients. So appreciate that. Yeah. Thank you for that question. I'll have to get back to that. Hey, Joel, I have an, a question. Um, so in the batch use case, what happens uh, if more than one record has match score of greater than seven? Good question. So Dun & Bradstreet returns their records in order of match score. So if you have two records of match score seven, 
there is still a weighting within the seven and the best score is returned, the best record is returned first. So if there's two, two match score sevens, your record will still be enriched mm -hmm. and the order they're returned in affects which one wins. But that order is meaningful. Thank you. All right, if there's no further questions, I'll jump to monitoring, which I know was asked about earlier. There is one more question. Um, oh, sure. <laughs> if, if you give me a space, then I'll, I'll uh, ask it. Um, does the DMB enrich data get stored in Cassandra slash GBQ? Yes, it's brought over like any other RELTIO data that you load to your tenant. So it, it's stored in a crosswalk. Um, it is stored in Cassandra in the back end and indexed by Elasticsearch, just like any other data. Um, so many of our customers have more than you know a thousand family members. Are they all loaded into Reltio? Yes. So it gets the it gets the upward tree. So it's not going to get your sibling members. Um, for example, if you were a CVS, right? CVS has a um, a lot of locations. If you were to find the Duns for a particular store, it would not go sideways to all the sibling stores across the United States and the world. It would only give you its regional headquarters, its domestic headquarters and global headquarters. So Joel, yeah, that would be defined as kind of that upward linkage from where you started in the tree, which would be the direct parent of the domestic ultimate, the global ultimate, for example. Um, if a client does have a use case to bring in that full family tree, which would be uh, downward, sideways, right? All entities, branches, divisions, et cetera. Is there ability to bring in that full family tree and map that within the RealTO solution? Not within the Dun & Bradstreet connector, but the RealTO integration hub, which we're gonna touch on later, is going to give you that kind of opportunity to bring in, the, to use some of the Dun & Bradstreet APIs that aren't immediately available in the connector. Right, that was kind of a leading question. I'm <laughs> Oh, perfect. <laughs> yeah, it was a good one. All right, so whether you use the on-demand RELTIO DMB connector or you use the batch connector, you are now at a point where you have the DUNS numbers for your, your data in RELTIO. And the next step is to configure monitoring. <clears throat> so monitoring is what brings in the updates after um, after you've already been enriched once, as things change over time, then a Bradstreet can push fresh data to your tenant. And the first step is to register with Dun & Bradstreet for a monitoring solution. And they, you set up um, a place for your data to be stored, what products you're using, that sort of thing. And after you have that initial registration done, everything else can be done within the RELTO APIs. On registration, you set up a seed file of which initial records you want to have handled by monitoring. For the best practice for us is just to set a seed file with one customer because the monitoring APIs are going to populate the rest of your, your monitoring list with your, the data in your tenant. So there's no need for you to go and try and do an extract of all your DUNS numbers from RELTIO to set up your seed update. Just pick one and go ahead and set it up because you have to have one to start. And after that, you can subscribe the rest with the monitoring APIs. And you set a cadence. So you could have your monitoring updates push weekly, daily, monthly, quarterly, yearly, that sort of thing intraday even, and you can set a, a cron schedule to pick how often the RELTIO connector goes and scans for updates to be pulled in. So once you schedule that cron job to run every so often, you it's just a wait and see as um, Dun & Bradstreet gets updates, they will flow into your tenant for decent sized data sets of over I don't know, maybe a couple thousand. Um, you normally start seeing updates within a day or two if you're doing daily. 
You'll also get email notifications every time you have um, a monitoring update come through as well. So that'll help you keep tracks on, track on what's going on. If anyone's familiar with the, the batch connector already, this is our newer product. At Mon the monitoring is our newer product. The monitoring API is very, very similar to the batch API, just a different endpoint. Um, but the way you schedule jobs and handle filters and everything like that, absolutely the same. If we didn't have to wait a couple of days for an update to come through, I would demo monitoring for you, but I don't think anyone wants a 48 hour webinar. <laughs> no. So one of our recent updates in, at Reltio is the introduction of our integration hub. This is a really cool low code, no code solution for bringing in data sets to Reltio and from all over places. There's an out-of-the-box connector that's very easy to use. And Dun & Bradstreet also has a um, connector. So it, it's really easy to integrate data sets that aren't currently available throughout the connector. And Michael kind of alluded to that earlier. So Michael, can you tell me a little bit about what other use cases and uh, opportunities are out there to bring in Dun & Bradstreet data outside of what we have in the connector? Yeah, sure, Joel. So, so think about it as outside that, that MDM golden record use case, which you just demoed. So one is the full family tree, which you mentioned. So if you want to bring in that entire family tree, all the members, uh, that can be brought in through the Realtio integration hub by a specific API call that's licensed with DMB and leveraging the hub to map those fields. Additionally, a big, uh, I think a big use case that uh, would be important to cover would be around the the financial and credit risk perspective. So whether that data will be uh, mapped into Reltio or SAP or other downstream systems, you can leverage the Reltio integration hub to bring in very specific use case data sets. So credit risk being one. If you think about supply chain, it could be around minority women-owned businesses. Uh, it could be around compliance, uh, disbarment lists, et cetera. Um, Compliance, which I just alluded to, uh, also with beneficial ownerships, uh, who is the actual owner of an organization um, in doing a conflict of interest. Uh, additionally, in sales and marketing, right? Deeper level insights, uh, activity triggers, information on an organization that you might bring into marketing automation, uh, downstream systems, Salesforce, for example, additional levels of detail. And again, going back to that financial and credit risk into finance systems. So that breadth and depth of DMB data outside of the traditional MDM use case can all be brought in with very easy mappings through the Reltio integration hub. And I would just start with saying, you know, from the MDM use case, um, you know, leverage the out of the box connector that's built. Then as we build out from additional use cases, data sets, collaborate with both Reltio from the hub as well as Dun & Bradstreet and your sales rep to license the specific content. We call them data blocks that are specific to that use case. So there'll be some good collaboration between Reltio and DMB uh, with the end client to get the best result. That's gonna be a, a great opportunity because I just a few months ago had a customer who wanted to bring in mm -hmm. that diversity and, and women-led business data. Mm -hmm. And it just wasn't available in the current connector, but it could probably be configured really quickly with uh, with this integration hub. I've already done a few sample recipes and, and it's amazing how quickly you can get up and running. That sounds really cool. Um, we have a, a few questions here. So this, I think came before this particular slide, but uh, Harris asks, are there any custom monitoring alerts that we can set, you know, for example, when bankruptcy indicator changes? That's a good question. So inside the monitoring tool, it's specifically looking for updates from Dun & Bradstreet. But within Reltio, it would not be difficult to configure a alert around for bankruptcy, for example. And the way you would do that, and I think you would actually probably use the integration hub to do it, is Reltio, every time there's an update to one of your records, it publishes a message to an SQSQ, and that allows for real-time downstream integration. So 
if you put that bankruptcy attribute attached to that SQS message, and that's pretty easily configurable, um, you can now listen for bankruptcy alerts. And all you would do is have the integration hub. Um, you'd have that SQS queue listener as the trigger. When a message comes in, you would read it, say, does this equal bankruptcy? If so, send out an email or, or publish a report to a Google Drive or, or something along those lines. So while that's not out of the box with a Dun & Bradstreet connector, that's one of those opportunities the uh, integration hub's going to enable. Exactly. I think the other one that uh, comes up quite a bit is merger acquisition from a corporate family tree structure, because there's a lot with sales operations that gets impacted if there's a change in the family tree, be it from a, a merger or a divestiture. So same thing there, you want to bubble up the, the monitoring events that are most important rather than be inundated. It's hard to sift through. Um, and as we talked about those additional use cases, uh, both in supply chain, merger acquisition and hierarchy is so important. And then really the, the finance or credit risk use case, changes in, in risk type, predictive scoring is very important as well for how you manage both suppliers as well as customers um, throughout the organization from collection uh, as well as supply chain uh, disruptions. Thanks, Michael. Really good. And, and uh, I thought for a minute, uh, Joel is going to be stumped, but Guess not. Um, we have another question. Uh, like the DMB connector, do we have any more uh, of these kind of tools in our RealTO platform? I think that's a loaded question, but. We do. So we also have the Salesforce connector, which allows for a bi directional sync and, and search before create kind of use cases uh, for integrating with your Salesforce CRM. There is a Snowflake connector, and there is also a Google BigQuery connector. So a lot of opportunities um, out there in the connectors. And if your connector doesn't exist, it's probably just one recipe away um, in the integration hub. And, and something I wanted to mention, I know Dun & Bradstreet has a, a library of recipes available. So most of the work would be done for you. The, the only piece you really have to do is, is that connect the RELTO at the front of the recipe um, to build out a lot of these things. Yeah, and just to build on that, Joel, as well, is you know when you think about the RELTO integration hub, um, the data contained within RELTO to get a master record, um, as you move that master record, right, Dunn's number, Global Ultimate Dunn's number, throughout your ecosystem into things like SAP, CRM, marketing automation, that is where traditionally we'll see additional uh, data sets being integrated or leveraged, right? For AI or ML, if it's um, to prioritize prospects by most likely to purchase or by, by financial risk, that's where the data can be enhanced through the integration hub and pushed out to your entire ecosystem um, to be leveraged. But starting within the hub of RELTIO is your golden record and that can be enhanced further using the integration hub with all those additional DMB data insights. Yeah, thanks guys. And um, I think we have some more questions coming in. And by the way, we've covered most of the connectors on one webinar or another. And we do have a Salesforce connector um, community webinar over the next few weeks. So we have two of those coming up. So make sure you listen in or if you can go to the community to see all the past webinars. Um, so it looks like Jay answered one of Gino's questions. I'm not going to go into that. Um, and then there's another question that says search before create use use case is supported with the native DMB connector or is it through the integration hub? Uh, the search before create was in relation to the, the Salesforce connector. So it lets you, it lets you search to see if, um, a record exists in, in your Salesforce instance before you create it in RELTIO. For Dun & Bradstreet, that, that use case doesn't really make as much sense because you're normally taking existing data and, and trying to enrich it with uh, what's available in Dun & Bradstreet. Joel, just to, to dig into that just a little bit, just from a workflow perspective. So um, couldn't the use case be, a, whether it's a sales rep working in Salesforce and they want to create a new opportunity or a new record, that that's where it would do the search within RELTIO MDM 
before creating that record in Salesforce to drive data stewardship, deduplication, things like that. Is that is that along the lines maybe of that same question? That's exactly it. Yep. And that's where that's where we see a lot of advantages around having that search before you create within the application of Salesforce to always check the MDM from a data stewardship and governance perspective. Um, and then it can obviously point to that to that golden record or that that DUNS number if it does already exist. But typically from a sales rep perspective, um, reps have traditionally not been very good at, um, at providing correct data at the onset of setting up maybe an opportunity or a record. So it's a good way to standardize that and catch mistakes and duplication uh, before they get created in, in the CRM workflow. Yeah, and the question um, basically was, um, in our use case, search before create is first do the search in the Salesforce. If it doesn't find, go to the RELTO. If it doesn't find, is there a scope we can go into DNB universe? So we don't. We want them to everything pre-populate for them. They don't have to, and they pick the right account. So that's why the question is uh, through the DNB connector. If we get that visibility of search before create or not, I know through the Salesforce connector you have, which mm -hmm. we are planning to use. But from a connector stand, DNB connector standpoint, do you provide that, or it has to be through the integration hub? That doesn't exist through the out-of-the-box connector. So that would be an integration hub okay. uh, kind of thing. Use case, okay, got it. Exactly. Thank you. Um, so I, I love the teamwork here. This is, this is great. We have Jay in here answering some of these questions and going into detail. Love it, Jay, thank you. We have Michael here team, teaming with Joel here to, to really help out. So this has been so awesome. One more question and then we can kind of get going here. Uh, can you please give a ballpark figure on the cost to DMV for the company you connect for? So I think, you know, that's probably going to be a question for either your customer success manager and or sales rep, but I don't know, Joel, if you can touch on that or. I could probably, I'll get yeah. you off the other spot and I'll take that one. <laughs> so uh, yeah, I mean, there's, there's a lot of factors, right? So it will be um, the number of records. There's obviously volume discounts when you, um, when you leverage DMB agreements directly with Dun & Bradstreet. So again, just to, to clarify, right, the, the connector and, and RELTIO is licensed by RELTIO, uh, the DMB data set and API is licensed directly through Dun & Bradstreet and your sales team. So with, without, you know, trying to avoid the question, it really depends on volume of records uh, that you look to match and enrich, uh, as well as the ability to update or monitor those records. And then additionally, with the RELTIO integration hub, uh, the DMB sales team member would be able to quote accurately based on volumes, those specific, what I call data blocks, specific data sets that could be integrated into those recipes for the use cases. So, I mean, I could say it's anywhere from, you know, a couple cents to a couple dollars a record. That probably doesn't help you. So um, feel free to reach out to me directly and I can connect you to your DMB sales rep. Um, and if you don't have one, I'll, I'll ensure we connect directly and get you in touch to get some accurate pricing. So not to avoid the question, there's just a lot of factors in determining the, the investment of a DMV data record. Yeah, and just maybe shoot your email in the chat. That'd be helpful, yeah. you know, so that they can or personal, personally send them a note. Um, all right, so let's, let's keep going, Joel. Thank you. All right, that's actually where I wanted to leave off because I think the Realty Integration Hub leaves leave basically limitless possibilities on, on what you can do between um, not only RELTIO and Dun & Bradstreet, but like we were talking about Salesforce, Snowflake, or, or any new um, or existing system, ERP, et cetera. So that more or less covers and wraps up the Dun & Bradstreet connector from, from my side. So unless we have any more questions, I think, I think we well, might be Well, so far, um, there are no other questions, but Again, you know, I want to thank you both uh, for coming, Michael and uh, Joel. Lots of really great uh, uh, conversation here. Uh, that's I love these kind of webinars where people are asking questions mm -hmm. and we get you know direct answers. Uh, so thank you, everyone, so much. Um, so we Chris, are. I have one question. Yeah, yeah. Just want to just uh, follow up uh, on the monitoring service. Uh, Joel, you mentioned the APIs are. 
uh, are there, um, which is very similar to batch APIs. But um, is there a place I can look at the monitoring service APIs? Yes. So if you go to docs.relto.com, mm -hmm. you can see I've been searching for them recently. So if you search for monitoring APIs, it'll bring you to this header and there's, there's kind of six children. Um, so there's one for registering or removing a particular entity. And the one I use most often is the one for registering multiple entities. So before we trigger this one, we have to set it up with uh, DNB for the registration. And once the registration is done, then I can go and add this one up, right? Or this that's, is the first one. That's right. So once you have your DNB registration, they're going to give you a registration identifier which is one of our required fields here. And that is what enables you to uh, start monitoring within RELTIO. Got it. Yeah, that, that's the information I was looking. So the, the registration identifier needs to be put in over here. OK. Yep. Makes sense. Got it. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. And then uh, if, if you're interested and you don't use the DMB connector, uh, Michael has put his email there. So um, make sure you get in touch with him. and. As, as of now, that concludes our webinar for today. Uh, thank you so much to uh, DMB and also um, Joel for, for the webinar. And thank you all for coming. Please quickly put in a note on if you enjoyed the webinar and, and that kind of stuff. I love giving feedback to, uh, to, to my boss and whoever else you know is interested in the feedback. But I know I'm interested in the feedback on how we're doing. But uh, great job, as always, Joel, uh, is, is one. Uh, some, you know, uh, Harish mentioned. So thank you everyone for coming. Really appreciate it. I'm going to stay on for another minute or two. Um, if there are other additional questions that might come in. Hey, Chris, uh, th thanks again for the opportunity. And there's a way to post questions also in the uh, the community chat. That's once right. this webinar ends. Is that correct? That is correct. So if you go to community.relto.com, uh, post your questions. Uh, and then, you know, if I'll make sure to to touch base with the DMB team. Michael, I'll let you know. Um, and, and you can find the right people. Or look, some of you guys are already members of the community. You can see it for yourself. Um, just by adding, you know, like a, you know, go in and, and just go and 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 uh, subscribe to the content. So all right. Well, thanks everyone. Take care. Thanks again. This is this is so uh, interesting. I loved it. Yeah, Joel, great, uh, great job, great demo, and um, I'll connect with the team. You saw Jay Daly answer some questions as well from the DMB side, so we'll follow up on a few of the questions as well, as well as some of that functionality that maybe we can look to build in uh, directly within the connector, right? Um, that we can meet some of those needs right out of the box. So I'll take that back to our teams, and we'll work through that as well. Absolutely. And thank you for co-hosting with me, Michael. It was fun. This you is bet. my first time uh, having a co-host on here. <laughs> you bet. I appreciate it. <laughs> hey, appreciate let's do it more often. You know, like yeah. if yeah. if you if if you guys have, you know, topics you want to go deep into that, you know, uh, is about, you know, Reltio type stuff, but, you know, also your your connector and those things, happy to, to host those kind of webinars. You know, Joel's done several of them. We don't have to just it doesn't have to be just employees. I'm happy to let other um, some of our partners to um, to do some of these too. So, no, I appreciate that. I, I do think we're going to get some uh, some interest around the Realtio integration hub yep. and those additional use cases. Uh, it's so top of mind with connecting to solutions like Snowflake, Salesforce, or SAP, for example. Yeah. So it's a huge need in the marketplace, and if we can avoid our clients, our mutual clients, having to build connectors on their own. Um, time to value is huge with the oh. integration hub. So um, it's it's a great technology to use. It's easy to build the recipes and get the data flowing in weeks versus what typically could be months, right? From well, Michael, from you're speaking our language. You know, my boss always talks about time to value. <laughs> yep, so. Absolutely, an ROI. So huge. I agree. It's huge. All right.
Well, thanks everyone. Really appreciate it. Take care. Thanks. Have a great day. Cheers. Bye-bye.